Hey everyone, I am Zweb Khan and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we added the feature to add new messages to the chat and fetch them back from Firestore. In this video, we are going to style the messages as chat bubbles and also add formatted dates to the messages. So let's get started. So let's start by adding some structure to our chat bubbles here. So we are going to go in our home component. And as you can see, we, ca we have a message.txt in our div here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to first convert this div into a chat bubble container. Now the chat bubble container will be our container for every message. This is going to uh, span the entire width of the area. And then within it, we are going to add another div which we are going to call the chat bubble itself okay this will only span till the uh, message length uh, and then obviously inside of it we are going to put in the message.txt and then inside of it we also want to have a span this is going to have a class of chat date and here as it says so we are going to specify the sent date okay great so structurally this is fine now let's add some styles to it so let's go in our CSS file or our SAS file and let's add a style for the chat bubble container. We are going to make it into a flex row and uh, make the width as 100%. As I said, we want to span it the entire row and uh, for the alignment, we are going to make it flex start uh, at this point, which will be on the left side. Great. Now for the chat bubble itself, we are going to add a style for it as well. The chat bubble is going to have a background white. It's going to have a set of paddings. So I'm just going to copy those paddings in. Okay. And the important thing here to note is that we have a padding of 100 pixels on the right side. This is to make sure that we have enough space for the date at the end of the message. Okay. Now let's add some margin at the bottom and a bit of border radius so that we can get those nice rounded borders. And for the width of the chat bubble, as I said before, it's going to fit the content that is contained in it. Okay, let's try this out and see how it looks. Great. So this looks better at least. Of course, we need to fix the time here and we'll do that in a bit. Now let's also add some formatting for the chat date which we seem to have missed it out. And remember the chat date needs to be positioned absolutely on the uh, bottom right. So for that first, we are going to give the chat bubble a position of relative. And then the chat date itself is going to get a position of absolute. Okay. And when we absolutely position it, we are going to put it bottom two pixels and right eight pixels. And to, we are also going to make the font size as 0.7 REM and the color as a gray. Now let's see how it looks. Okay, I think this chat date is, uh, we are confusing those chat dates. So we are going to show that this chat date is inside of the chat bubble. This. Okay, so you can see that it sort of uh, messes up with our uh, formatting. So what we are going to do is we are temporarily, we are going to change our sent date and uh, put, uh, put a default until we correct the formatting for it. Now you can see our chat bubbles come to life and look more like any other chat app such as WhatsApp. But you'll notice one thing, the messages should be aligned towards the bottom instead of starting on the top here. We need to add a small trick to force the top element to be aligned to the bottom. So for that, what we're going to do is for the chat area, we are going to add a display flex and a flex direction of column. Great. And then we are going to add a trick with the chat area and the first child. So the first message uh, in the chat area should have a margin top of auto. This is going to push that first message down. And let's test this out again. Great. Now our messages are as they are supposed to be. Now one last thing that we need to do is to differentiate the messages based on the sender so that all messages don't look the same and we can know visually who sent the message. So let's add some styles for the sender's message. So for the chat bubble container, we are going to add a special style here and sender. This means that if we have sender on the chat bubble container itself, we are going to make the justify content as flex end. That is align it towards the right instead of the left. Also, if we have the chat bubble container and sender, then inside the chat bubble, we would like the background to be of this blue color. Great. Now we just need to add the sender class when the currently logged in user is sending the message. To do that, we are going to go in our HTML and here we are going to add an ng container and include the user observable in it. We are going to call it as current user. Okay. And we're going to put everything inside of it. So let's copy out all of this inside of it. Next on the chat bubble container, we are going to add an ng class directive 
and here we are going to check or rather we are going to assign the sender class to this div if the message dot sender id is equals to current user dot uid so if the currently logged in user is the sender for that message then we are going to add the sender class which is going to trigger this styles that we added okay let's try this out now you can see since uh, we are the current users logged in and we sent these messages uh, we have the new style applied to it but to actually test it fully we will need to have two people chatting with each other so one way is to do it in the same browser but we won't be able to do that because um, it's going to clear my currently logged in user if I log in with another user so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another browser we're going to open our edge browser and let's open up our app here let's log in to our app but this time with Hina okay and as you can see we have our chat with Zweb and we can open that up and now we can send a message from Hina's side so we're going to send okay let's meet today and we can see we get that message here and it is in a different format because this is the message sent by Hina not by me and you can then obviously test it uh, side by side and you can see that our chat app is working great this seems to look perfect one thing that is left though is to format the dates now for our dates we get a timestamp object from Firestore which we can't convert readily into a formatted date as we need so what we're going to do we're going to add a custom pipe to format the date as we want this pipe we can use wherever we need to show the date from Firestore so let's create a new pipe here let's say nggc or nggp and we're going to put it in our pipes folder we're going to call it date display great our pipe is added here as you can see let's open this up and the first thing we're going to do is to inject the date pipe in our constructor here which we get with angular commons we are also going to add a provider for it here so that we can use it and then we will um, add our transform function so for the transform function the value will be we won't have any arguments here we're going to remove our arguments for the value uh, the format would be timestamp which would be from firestore or it could also be undefined that is there's nothing there and the return type would be string which is a formatted string so what we're going to do here is to use the transform function of the date pipe in the first one we'll get the value and here we are going to get value we are going to get the milliseconds from the timestamp that we get from firestore and for the formatting we're going to format it into the short date format and we're going to ch also check for null so if you're going to get null here or undefined we are going to return the empty string uh, with a nullish coalescing operator here okay okay let's use this date display pipe now so we are going to use this here first in the messages we're going to do message dot sent date and we're going to do date display here okay we will change the types here as well because the types for the date can be either timestamp or the date we are going to import timestamp here the same thing we are going to do with this the last message date now this is because when we are sending the uh, dates for saving it's actually in a date format but when we are when we get that date it is in the form of a timestamp so we need to consider both types here okay so this works now and uh, for the chat list as well we need to add it so that the chat list shows our date correctly so the last message date is here and we can use the date display pipe here okay let's test this out great so we can already uh, get that date here and if you look into that date in detail you can see that you can get the date and the time in the short format that we needed it let's also check it in our other messages and you can see that we get the date formats here as well great okay all of this looks good now but what if we try to add lots of messages so let me do it right now so as you can see we have lots of messages here and uh, there are a few problems that we need to resolve so first of this is that we don't have any scroll bar here so we need to add a scroll here so let's go in our code and let's go in our CSS and in our chat area we are going to add an overflow auto here and let's see how this looks so yes you can see that we have a scroll bar here and we can see all our messages now by scrolling now let's switch over to another chat and come back so if we switch over to Zen here we come back to Hina and you can see that we need to scroll all the way down here to get to the latest message we are more interested in the latest message so this is not good for user experience also when we send a new message here for example if we send a message here you can see that there's the scroll bar shows a new message down but it doesn't scroll down to that message 
until we scroll down ourselves. So this is also not ideal. So both of these problems have one solution. Let's add a function to scroll down to the latest message and reuse it in both of these cases while switching in the chats and while sending a new message. So we're going to go in our home component. We're going to add a new function here called scroll to bottom. Okay. Okay. So how do we scroll to the bottom? So for that, I'm using a trick here and the trick is that I'm going to add right and the, at the end of those these messages i'm going to add um, an empty div here and this is going to be hidden but i'm going to add an identifier to it called end of chat okay then in my component i'm going to use a view child decorator to get this div so let's add a view child here end of chat end of chat this is going to be an element ref because it's a simple div okay and then here we are going to first check if this dot end of chat that is whether it is there in the DOM or not. And then we're going to use this or end of chat dot native element. And then we're going to use uh, a DOM element function, which is scroll into view. Inside of it, we are going to give options of behavior smooth so that we can scroll smoothly. Okay. And also to add a bit of handling, we are going to use a timeout as well so that the UI gets some time to initialize itself properly. So we are going to give a set timeout here of 100 milliseconds, not much. And we're going to shift this code inside of it. All right, so our function is ready. Now, where do we need to use it? Uh, we need to use it when a new message has been added. So where has where do we send a new message? We send a new message here and we use it in the function add chat message. So let's put it in this subscription here. Okay, so this subscription is called when the chat message has been added. So we're just going to call this dot scroll to bottom here. Great. And then the second place that we want to use this is when we switch chats. So where do we switch our chats? Uh, we actually use the messages observable here so the message observable gets updated whenever the chat list changes so let's add a tap operator here so whenever this changes or whenever the messages changes a new set of messages appear we are going to just use the scroll to bottom function okay i think we should also remove the hidden here because this might create an issue so let's test this out and now let's look at both of our chats so now when we see here you can see that whenever you select the chat it scrolls down to the latest message and when we select the chat here it scrolls down to the latest message and then when we send a message here for example how are you again it scrolls down to that last message and here as well great so our chat app is nearing completion now in the next video we are going to find a big bug in our app and we'll go on fixing it that would make our chat app functionality complete but i'm also planning to add a bonus video in which we add cool new features such as the scene indicator currently typing indicator etc i hope you're enjoying this series as much as i did while making it if you have any comments or suggestions do shout out in the comments below and as always be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified about my future videos thanks for watching